Hello, welcome to your weekly news highlights with me, Hasina Momtaz. Here are your top stories for the week. Amid dramatic rescue scenes, Reshma Begum, a ready-made garment worker, was pulled alive from the debris of the collapsed building in Savar on the 17th day of the rescue operation. The 19-year-old seamstress from Dinajpur was rushed to the combined military hospital at Savar after being rescued on Friday. Doctors say she's now out of danger. The incredible discovery of her being trapped in the rubble came 406 hours after the nine-storey structure collapsed in a heap on the morning of April 24th, killing more than a thousand people so far. She fought all odds to survive the catastrophe for 17 days, even as the rescuers gave up hope of finding survivors amidst the wreckage. Bangladesh Army's Major Muazin, who helped with her rescue, said they heard a feeble voice under the rubble and found Reshma around 3.30pm while they were clearing away debris between the first floor and basement with heavy equipment. She later revealed that she had survived by scavenging for biscuits and bottled water in the rucksacks of dead colleagues in the basement. There was some dried food around me. I ate the dry, dried food for 15 days. The last two days I had nothing but water. I used to drink only a limited quantity of water to save it. It is also believed Reshma may have survived for such a long time because of the large amounts of oxygen and water rescuers pumped into the wreckage during the initial efforts to free trapped workers. After the building collapsed, the Army, Fire Service, Red Crescent Charity and various law enforcement agencies, along with volunteers and locals, commenced the rescue effort to save as many lives as possible. After giving up hope of finding anyone alive under the wreckage, the rescuers started using heavy machinery to clear the debris on April 20, 28. But the next day they found a female worker named Shahina alive under the debris. Unfortunately, she could not be rescued as she died in a fire that had broken out at the wreckage site only a few hours after she was spotted. The rescue of Reshma may sound unbelievable, but it's not the first such case. She is one of the longest surviving victims ever to be pulled out alive after being buried alive. On Saturday, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina renewed her offer of dialogue to the opposition leader Khaled Azir and urged her to join Parliament to discuss all issues in order to resolve the country's ongoing political impasse. She said, all your efforts have gone in vain. Your 48-hour ultimatum has also failed. So give up all these tactics, come and join the upcoming budget session of Parliament and discuss all issues to find a resolution. Hasina, who heads the governing Awami League, said this in her opening remarks at a meeting with Awami League's grassroots leaders from Manik Gonj district from her official residence, Gono Baban. The Awami League president also mentioned that there is no alternative to discussion in order to resolve problems. She said, so sit for dialogue in or outside parliament and resolve the current political stalemate. Hasina called up on the BNP chief, Khaled Azia, to shun violent acts and said the people of the country are fed up of the chaos and they do not want to see such things anymore. The Premier said her party has the ability and strength to apply to these violent attacks, but they do not want to enter into any confrontation and are showing restraint and patience for the sake of the country and its people. She said, we want peace, not conflict. So don't inflict sufferings on people by calling unnecessary and illogical shutdowns, she said, referring to the Hartals. Hasina also said that although she had called up on the opposition leader to sit for a dialogue in a peaceful manner, Khalida, was, Khalida would be given 48 hours to respond. She also warned Khalida that Awami League would not find any way to escape from this situation. Senior BNP leader Madhud Ahmad has asked the government to veer off any wrongdoing, saying that the last BNP-led government is repenting its previous mistakes. He said, we too were in power, made mistakes and now we repent. So we're urging the government to avoid wrong paths. He said on Friday at a programme in Dakar, you cannot quell the people's aspirations with muscle. The time will come when guns won't work, he said. The former law minister said the Awami League-led government would repent in future its fascis fascism and vengeance like the BNP Jamaat Islami government did. They think they can run the country any way it pleases them, Madud. A BNP standing committee member claimed the government had killed many at the rally of the Hifaj Islam at Motijil on the night of May 5th. He also criticised the government for destroying the congenial atmosphere for talks. The government has led the country to such a position where there's no atmosphere to hold dialogues. They have been practicing the politics of vengeance ever since they came to power, he alleged. An army-installed caretaker government took over in 2007 at the end of the BNP's tenure after the two leading political coalitions fell to reach an agreement. The Army League-led government came to power in 2009 with a landslide victory and scrapped the caretaker government system. 
through the 15th Amendment to the Constitution two years later. As a result, the upcoming national election will be held under a partisan body. The BNP-led opposition has been on the streets ever since, claiming such an election will not be free and fair. Judges at the International Crimes Tribunal 2 found Jamaat e Islami leader Muhammad Kamrud Jaman, who was indicted on seven charges, including murder, mass murder and rape, guilty of five charges on Thursday. The International Crimes Tribunal said the defence failed to annul the prosecution's charge that Jamaat e Islami leader Muhammad Kamrud Zaman had mobilised the Al Badr in the Greater Maiman Singh area during the 1971 Liberation War. Judge Muhammad Majibur Rahman said five of the seven charges levelled against him had been proven. Rahman read out the summary verdict on the Jamaat leader on Thursday. Kamrud Jaman was sentenced to death on charges of genocide at Shahagpur and murder of Ghulam Mustafa. Justice Obedul Hassan read out the verdict. He said, he has committed these crimes and it would be an injustice if he is not penalised with capital punishment. The Jamaat leader was given life in prison for killing Badir Jaman and murdering five others. He was imprisoned for 10 years for torturing lecturer Saeed Abdul Hannan. The ruling observed that it was only the Jamaat e Islami which formed Al Badr, Al Shams and several other armed organisations to commit crimes against humanity across the country in 1971. Upon hearing the verdict, Kamrud Jaman stood up and said, wrong judgment, everyone has to stand in the court of history. However, the tribunal's prosecution and Attorney General Mabubi Alam expressed satisfaction over the verdict. The BNP has rejected the government's version of the May 5 police action at Motijil against the hardline hifajat e islam The Home Ministry issued the press notice on Thursday rubbishing the opposition's claim that thousands had been killed in the 15-minute police drive at the Shapla Chatta. They said it was false and politically motivated. We need to get answers to our questions, Khaled Azir's advisor, Shamsu Zaman Dudu, told a press conference at BNP's Nayapaltan headquarters on Saturday. We and the nation found unfounded issues in the press notice. He said the press note failed to reveal the truth about the incident and could, go, and could not go beyond what had been said by the Prime Minister and Home Minister over the incident. It is unfortunate, he said. We did not expect such light comments. The government said in the statement that the activists of BNP and Jamaat e Islami and its student wing Chatra Shibir had orchestrated the mayhem unleashed in the capital during the Hifazat rally in Motijil's Shapta Chatar. The Home Ministry statement said there was no alternative to flushing out the Hifajat activists to prevent further chaos and ensure public safety following the mayhem at the capital's Paltan, Beitul Mukarram and surrounding areas. It also said the Chittagong-based radical group's chief, Shah Ahmad Shafi, decided against attending Hifajat's own rally on that day following pressure from the BNP, leading to total anarchy. Dudu said the government did not say in the press note how many rounds of bullets were fired or who led the drive. He also said the note should have identified the people who were in plain clothes but took part in the drive. He alleged the mass media was forced to stay away during the police action. That rounds off our summary of the top political stories from Bangladesh for this week. Please do join me again next week at the same time. Thank you for watching. Allah Hafiz.